In this video, I'll be going through the Criterion B Strength 3 section of my design e-portfolio report that managed to score me a 7 out of 7 for design. So this strand focuses on presenting the chosen design and outlining the reasons for selection with reference to design specification. So how I did this is I conducted a survey in which the survey mainly consisted of the respondents choosing which sketch was the best out of the three, why was it the best, what improvements could be made. So these were the types of questions I asked. So it's sort of, it basically just fulfills the criteria in which I end up choosing the chosen design. And I end up outlining the reasons for why it's been chosen in the words of my respondents. And by reference to the design specification, the way I made the survey is in respect to the design specification that I had created pre um, previously in the previous strands. But we'll get into that as I go through my report. So if you were to look at actually the criteria for strand three, it doesn't really apply to my product. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really follow it, but we'll just see how my report is. So first I just mentioned the method that I will be using to choose my, fi my final design. So which out of the three sketches that I'll be choosing. So the final sketches and changes to be made will be determined by a survey, which will be conducted on a section of my target audience. So about the survey, when it comes to Criterion B, it's not necessary for you to really do it on your target audience. It's because the main goal is to choose your final sketch. This is different from the survey that will be conducted in Criterion D. In Criterion D, it is pretty much compulsory for you to do it on your target audience because you want to know the impact that your product, your solution has had on your target audience. But the thing in Criterion B, it's not really necessary. But for me, my target audience is a school community, which are basically MYP students, um, teachers, and parents. So I had easy access to this target audience. So it was very easy for me to just focus on it there. And it's easy for me to also justify why I chose them as my target audience. So therefore, I did it on them. So I just included the names of the people. And so they were all MYP students, as well as a few parents of a child within the school community so it fulfills the target audience which are myp students and parents within the school community so they fall under my target audience range and just my reasoning as to why i had chosen them as my target audience it's because they can think from the audience's perspective in terms of determining weaknesses and strengths of my uh, my solution my design and this is just basically how I conducted the survey. I sent a proper email, stuff like that. And you should also be describing your survey form. I just wanted to conserve space. So what I did is I pushed my survey form to my appendix. So I just put the description for my survey form here. This is something that you could do if you're tight on space. So a survey allows me to evaluate people's thoughts and opinions. The first question, is basically I just asked the question relating to my issue, which I'm focusing on cultural imperialism prevalent in the 21st century. So just to know how well my target audience is aware of this issue, the next question would be out of the three, which design do you think is most suitable for the school community? When you ask these types of questions, you always should be specifying the target audience because you're not just doing it for, and you're not simply asking which design is the best. You want to know, is it the best in terms of your target audience or not? So I would have my respondents choose out of three options. Third question, justify your selection. I want, This is an open-ended question where the respondents could write whatever. So it was just for me to know the reasons as to why this, chest, this uh, design was chosen. As mentioned in the strand earlier, you'll have to know the reason why. You have to justify why that design was chosen. And choose the best statement based on the design chosen. You may pick more than one. So what I did in my survey form is I provided like a few options in which they could first pick more than one. It was basically options like statements of my product. Like for instance, the aesthetic, like the aesthetics are this, the cost is this, the materials used are appropriate, stuff like that, that uh, viewed my product in a positive light. So um, the odd respondents could choose whichever was appropriate to what they believe. So this is in, I wrote these in terms of what 
design specifications I wanted my product to have. So this is how I fulfilled that strength. And last question, what improvements would you like to see my design chosen in question two, the design that they chose? This is so that I can propose improvements that I can make my final sketch later on in strand four. And conclusion of the selection process. Normally, you should be creating graphs and like pie charts, bar graphs or whatever based on your responses for each question. I did do that, but I pushed all that to the appendix as well as it was taking up space. So I just sort of simplified it with the question and the analysis in which you can see the actual graphs in the appendix. So I pulled the questions and the analysis. So I put how many respondents were like how many respondents answered in this sort of manner, how many respondents did not answer in this sort of manner. So I first just directly mentioned what was the result. And I had to provide sort of a justification as to why I thought that was the result. For instance, for this question, five out of seven respondents were not aware of this issue. And I justified it by saying these five were all students. The other two were parents that I had surveyed so that the generation age gap could have possibly caused this. And this one is quite straightforward. Most respondents chose sketch one. So that's the sketch that I had chosen as my sketch to base on for my final sketch. Justify your selection. So this is pretty much a justification of why that sketch was chosen. This is basically just a summary of whatever responses that my respondents gave that I just placed into one paragraph. And choose the best option based on design chosen. So for this question, as I mentioned, what I did is I created statements where it basically should use my, uh, my, my sketch in a positive light. So what I did is that I took the statements that most respondents picked and thought of it as the strength of my design and took the ones that they didn't really pick as the weakness. So I summarized my paragraph in that point of view. And the last one, I just summarized whatever improvements that the respondents told me to do. And this chosen sketch is sketch one. You can, it's not enough to just say that the chosen sketch is sketch one. You should just show sketch one again. You should always include it again, even though it's the same thing you included before. And one more table to show the problems that could be solved. This pro these problems are got it from possible improvements, as well as the question before that, where the ones, the statements that weren't picked that much by respondents, I took that as weaknesses. So I put problems that could be solved along with the solution that I had designed. And by and in the explanation section, I stated what is the problem? Why is it a problem? How it could impact the target audience? How it could impact how people view my uh, solution? As well as how I would change it. For instance, for the first problem, I said that the problem was uh, dyslexia-restricted design. So... Since my target audience is, a, is wide, it's an entire school community, this learning difficulty could be possible. Hence, uh, one person suggested changing the font style into a different one because it may be difficult for people with dyslexia to read. In order to just make this explanation more credible, I also gave a stronger justification to the change I made by, by looking at an actual source and, of course, providing in-text citation. So this is something you could do everywhere. You could just take sources that sort of justify any changes you make. And I did the same for the rest of it. And there were two us. And what happened was that there were also other improvements that I had already included, but probably the respondents did not really notice. So just, so, uh, just to justify this, I just included a few lines down here as to why nothing has been done about that. Just justify that it was already in my product, probably just not noticed by the respondents. And that would be the end for criterion B strand three. Yes. So this will probably score you a seven for this strand.